Night of a thousand ribbons, our finest city burned. It burned with fires lit by cruelty and neglect. It burned with shame for giving the title of emperor to a man who did not deserve it. Working. 
Let's see if Rayclast has been good to you, witch. Harness your fear! <laughs> Solomon's dead, then. Another victim of piety's cruelty. Perhaps he escaped lightly. A look upon Grigor to see what life entails under piety's influence. I give you this, in recognition of all that you have done for us. We shall mourn Tormund's death as we shall treasure Clarissa's life. General Gervasius demands absolute obedience from his black arts, meaning he surrounded himself with cowards and lackwits unable to lift a finger without orders. If you are able, traverse the river and murder Gervasius in his own barracks. You'll be ripping the very mind from the skulls of our enemies. Clarissa will weep for Tolman. She must. The cloud is darkest before the rain. It's an often told story among the Karui. How Vol of Thebris bent his knee to my ancestor, King Kong, and promised freedom in return for war. While Vol raised his purity rebellion in the heart of the Empire, Kaum took Lord Lion Eye's head and the southern coast all the way to the Siren's Cove. It was the greatest conquest the Karui had ever seen. If I knew how to cross the river safely, I'd be wearing Gravisius's head on my belt. Why are you still standing? I'll miss a boy. He was always up for a laugh, whether it was at his expense or not. But I wouldn't miss that Clarissa more. Argon's a name, by the way. And it's my honor to welcome you to Dirty Old Sun, the metropolis of opportunity. The opportunity to make something of yourself, or the opportunity to have a very messy death. I was Clarissa's guardian angel back in Orith. Put food on the table in return for a bit of light work. I try to keep her out of trouble as best I can here. But San's full of secrets, and Clarissa's full of curiosity. She's just so... ample, as our Maramore. In my mind, you'll find no saucier specimen of womanhood. It's her tattoos and that fancy talk she does. Intoxicating. She's a cool one, though. <laughs> Gravisius is the mailed and bloodied right hand of Dominus. 
and I thought the Templar were meant to be spiritual men of deepest humanity. You know there's a sarcasm in my tone, right? I had to smuggle a fellow out of Theopolis once. Got a bit too friendly with Gravisius' wife, he did. Every blackguard was out on the streets looking for him, so I had to think lateral-like. We took to the drains and didn't bow our heads above the pavement until we sniffed the sea. A grubby bloody job it was, but worth it for the coin he paid. Trust me, the sewers is the only way you'll sneak up on old General Iron Ass, and you'll need a key to get in there. Have a chat to Clarissa about that. I'm no history scholar, but I know that Emperor Chittus was overthrown by Vol of Thebris in the so-called Purity Rebellion. But Vol had the shortest reign of any internal emperor. The cataclysm saw to that. Hello. Talamoana exile. Hagen is a man of many claims, and those claims seldom dance harmoniously together. A lie is a death sentence in Nga Makanui, so I was raised a daughter of truth. Hagen is a son of self-interest. He's no warrior nor spirit singer. He's a Korangi. I don't know the right word in Ariathan, but in Karui it means he who wins wars with false promises. Goodbye. <laughs> Poor Tolman. I made this bracelet for him when he first arrived here. Idiot said he'd never take it off. I called him a liar. He didn't, though. Not once. I need to give you something. I asked a lot of you out there in the slums. More than I should have. You tried. And that's all we exiles can ever hope to do. Those keys unlock the gates to the sewers. Tolman found them. Figure that in the worst of times, people will hide their wealth in the worst of places. We were never going to test his theory. Not with the undying down there. But you're strong. Stronger than any of us here. I don't think you need to fear the dark. Sorry, I... I need some more time to to think. We'll talk soon, I promise. Be careful. Listen carefully, witch. Thanks to your sister in art, piety, I no longer dream when I sleep. I only have nightmares. The same nightmare over and over. The mirror. It's never my reflection looking back. The first time that mirror appeared to me, it was Cole I saw, a rapist from Oriath I had the displeasure of sharing a pen with in Gravisius' stockade. Piety took him for her experiments, and that night I saw her handiwork while I slept. This time it was Tolman, flesh dried to leather, Organs shrunk to husks, blood trickling through his skeleton like red dust in an hourglass. It's piety's gift to me, that mirror. At least I won't be seeing Clarissa the next time I look into it. And for that alone, I hope it's not you I see either. I walked halfway across this forsaken continent because of an ode. Of jewels and eternity, it's called. For twinkled promises of jewels and eternity, the gemling queen gave her heart and body to the king of shades for one more day in the sun. The last day in the sun. That's but a portion of the full epic. The Gemling Queen lived, and she's the enigma behind the fall of the Ezomites and the Eternals both. Look to the Solaris Temple to the northeast. Find the Gemling Queen's remains before piety does, 
and destroy them.